It's more real than you know. It's happening all around us, and Georgia is no exception. The youngest, most trusting members of our state are falling victim to sexual exploitation and trafficking. It's time that criminals who purchase sex from children know that the secret is out. And Georgia's not going to stand for it. It just takes ordinary people being informed, standing up, and making a statement. So when you tell me you didn't know, we're not buying it. George is not buying it. For more information on how you can make a difference, go to GANotBuyingIt.org. You know, a few years ago in the Republican caucus, I was told not to talk about this subject, and I think it was about five years ago. I'm getting a little bit older now. And my members of my caucus told me that prostitution was the oldest business in the world, and Renee, you're not going to change anything. And I said, yes, I know prostitution is in the Bible, but what is not in the Bible is 50-year-old men having sex with 12-year-old little girls. So I was told not to talk about it, and then it was reinforced up there on the third floor. Renee, you especially are not going to talk about this on the Senate floor. Well, as most of you know that know me, you know that was my get-go, and I was going to talk about it on the Senate floor. So after years of working on this, it took me about three years to change one simple law, and that was mandatory reporting of child exploitation. Three years to change a, a small law. Then after changing several laws, it became a domino effect, and it became the fad, and it became in the media, and I'm like, oh my gosh, something that I couldn't talk about is now being talked about widely. The most important thing we did, we put our money where our mouth was and we put money in the state appropriations budget. And that money is still in there and that money has grown. Another thing that is very important is that we put that money in the governor's office of children and family and they're here now and they're the stewards of that money and they've done a very good job. The other thing that is remarkable to me is that when we first started out in the state of Georgia, there was very few nonprofits that worked on this particular issue. Yes, there were many nonprofits who worked on child abuse, but not on human trafficking. And within this cultural movement sprang up, the groups such as Street Grace, A Future Not a Past, which is Youth Spark, and then other nonprofits and service organizations today, like the Rotary Club of Georgia, have joined in. So we have made absolutely remarkable steps. We are now educating law enforcement across the state of Georgia. We are educating judges, prosecutors, the education establishment with teachers, principals, the health care infrastructure like emergency room physicians, doctors, nurses, social workers, all about the issue of the commercial sexual exploitation of children. And what has this done, as, as Attorney General Sam Olin says, we've gone from a D on a report card in the state of Georgia to a B. We have gone across the nation as a state as an example of what a state can do about a horrendous problem that happens to children in the state of Georgia. So we are very proud to become a leader in the state. We have come full circle from that third floor room where I couldn't even talk about this subject to now we're shouting about it on the top of billboards. There are children, young girls and young boys, that wake up every day and they think about what their day is going to be like. They should be thinking about going to school and making good grades, about what sports or what team they play on, um, what church, what youth group activity they've got to do that day, what mom and daddy are going to fix them for supper, and that they should be safe and secure. But the kids that we're here to talk to you about today worry about terrible things. They worry about things like, how many strange men am I going to have to have sex with today? Will my pimp beat me? Will my pimp give me drugs or alcohol to keep me addicted to this lifestyle? How long will I be in this location before I go to another state? And will I ever see my family again? These are the terrible, awful things mostly young girls worry about. I want you to imagine for a moment what is the most safest and most peaceful time, the most peaceful place for you every evening with your children or with your parents. 
it's probably your home. It's probably when the sun sets down. That's when the day is over. That's when the world that you've been out there dealing with is behind you. That's when you can look upon your children and you know that they are safe. Now I want you to imagine that instead of your children having the safety of your home, they are facing the horrors that Lee just articulated so very well, in which the threats of violence, mental intimidation, drugs, and all other kinds of forms of horrors are perpetrated upon your daughter or your son. Well, folks, the people that are the victims of human trafficking here in the state of Georgia are Georgia's children. It doesn't matter if they were born here or, it doesn't, or they were transported here. They are Georgia's children. And they deserve to have that same feeling of safety that your children have when nightfall comes. You know, I often get asked as a, a white Republican from the suburbs, how did I come to care about the issue of human trafficking and the commercial sexual exploitation of our children? And it really, it really has to do with my faith. And God has laid a burden on my heart, uh, much as the 18th century abolitionist William Wilberforce had that said, God has laid before me two great objects, the suppression of the slave trade and the restoration of manners. And we in law enforcement and, and legislators and the, and the attorneys and the prosecutors that you see before you, we can suppress the slave trade, we can fight it, and these, these men and women are up here doing that every day of the week. But it's that second part, it's the restoration of manners, that this program, this uh, not buying it program plays such a key role and where you folks out there play such an important role. We've got, to, that we're asking essentially nothing less than changing society and changing how we view this issue and how that we're not going to stand by and let people buy sex from women. We're not going to do that. And that's what this program is, it, it attempts to do and is so crucial in doing. And we need all of you. Uh, people who are out there, people who have a burden for this issue and, and are offended as I am that this happens in our communities, to stand with us and join with us shoulder to shoulder to fight these horrible crimes. It's more real than you know. It's happening all around us, and Georgia is no exception. The youngest, most trusting members of our state are falling victim to sexual exploitation and trafficking. It's time that criminals who purchase sex from children know that the secret is out. And Georgia's not going to stand for it. It just takes ordinary people being informed, standing up, and making a statement. So when you tell me you didn't know, we're not buying it. Georgia's, Georgia's not, not buying it. it. For more information on how you can make a difference, go to GANotBuyingIt.org.